This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today we're still basking in the post-holiday glow of the decks that I used in the CGB's Christmas Carol. But those decks are not meant for memes. They really were designed for an aggressive ladder. And today, I'm going to see how high we can get on the Mythic Ladder playing a deck that I love in a meta where it is well positioned. And it's something I want to talk about a lot and something people ask me about a lot, like advice that I may have for climbing ladder. If you want to get up the ladder, if you want to go towards the tippity top of the ladder, if that is the goal, what you should be doing is finding a deck that is good already. It should be a decent deck. I, I say all the time with the decks that I play, I... I expect them to be good. If you see a deck on this channel, you should expect it to be good. If you find it is not playing it, I'm sure that results vary and that metas change. But most of the time, I will tell you in the beginning and the end of the video, if I think a deck is really good and I don't play terrible decks, I just, I can't bring myself to do it. I shouldn't play terrible decks often. If I do, I tell you they're terrible. So just to let you know, take a deck that you like, Maybe one that I feature on the channel, maybe one that you see on Ladder a lot, or one that you see in a tournament. Learn to play it very well and make tiny changes to the deck to meet the meta that you expect to face. And you know what to expect to face based on what's popular and based on what, what other YouTubers are doing and based on what wins tournaments. Like, that is the formula. And today the formula leads me here. Blue-white, this is the Ghost of Christmas Past, Dream Trawler, Blue White Control, no Yorian, because what I'm trying to do in this with this best of one deck is I'm trying to play a very clean, predictable game that really takes it to aggro decks. I want to hit removal, removal, sweeper, maybe some setup cards to make sure I curve out well, like Birth of Melitus and Omen of the Sea. But I want to hit removal, removal, either sweeper or to fairy, ECD, Dream Trawler. And I want to get into a position as quickly as possible where I can use the combination of Teferi Master of Time, Elspeth Conquers Death, and Dream Trawler to discard and bring back trawlers and just keep pressure on the board till they succumb to the life-linking power of the Dream Boat. Because not many people in, are out there with their best of one decks prepared for this card. They have very few ways to interact with it whatsoever. And if you can take out their early threats, then they can't really do much about it. Gruel Adventures is the most powerful deck, and it isn't nearly as played as Mono Red, Mono White, or Rogues. And the way that you can beat that deck, quite frankly, they don't remove Dream Trawler. They just try to go over the top of it with either the Great Henge or the Ember Cleave. And the way to stop that from happening is to remove all of their early creatures that have a, that have a power and toughness of potentially three or more. So that's what we're doing with Apparition. That's why we have two Banishing Lights I don't think this card is good in Magic in general, but in Best of One, there are so many decks that don't have any way to remove it that it often is three mana remove target thing regardless of size. And that's important because a lot of other cards that would fit the bill and try to be removal spells or bounce spells like Brazen Borrower, they just don't get that job done. But Gruel Adventures can't remove it, usually. They don't play Gem Razors or Thrashing Brontodons very often. Rogues, no way to remove it. Mono Red, no way to remove it. Mono White can remove it. Mono White is a bit of a problem because they can ignore Shatter the Sky if they have Selfless Savior or if they have a board with like Heliod that they can rebuild and then attack you with it. But Mono White isn't immune to all of our exile effects like Glass Casket, Skyclave Apparition, and Elspeth Conquers Death. And Mono White does have problems with Teferi Master of Time. The phasing on their Sky Mauled creature is actually really good. You can also phase Speaker of the Heavens in combat before they gain all the life they need to make the Angel. So uh, Teferi is good against Embercleave decks and good against Mono White and not good in most other places. He's a very narrow Planeswalker, but those decks are really popular. I can't stress enough, guys. I really can't stress this part enough. If you take something away from this video, remember this. I build my decks and I tune my decks for the meta I expect to see in the place where I play. If I'm going to play a deck in top 100 mythic, top 1000 mythic, it is going to look a lot different than the deck I would play for the play queue for fun. Like, really, if I run this in the play queue right now, do you know what I'll play against? 
other Yorian and blue white control decks, and I'll be at a huge disadvantage because I only have two counters. Whereas if I went up to four neutralized, two negates, and two mystical disputes and played in play queue, I would be better off. The play queue algorithm matches you against decks similar to your own. That's just the way it is. You can yell about rigged and you can complain about it. It's the way it is. If you want to have success in the play queue, you need to think about the mirror. In High Mythic, nobody's going to play this deck. Why? Because I put up Yorian versions for a really long time and a lot of anti-mono red versions. If they're going to play anything like this, they're going to play a very different version, a 60 card version that's probably less consistent. Or what has always dominated the latter, no matter how many videos I make, mono white, mono red, rogues, like these are the decks of ladder. And this deck has a ton of removal and not as many clunky counter spells to deal with those decks. So that's what we're here for. We're going to go play it. Uh, we're starting out like 50. Are we somewhere between like 30 and 50? We're going to start between 30 and 50. We're going to try hard today. We're going to bring it. Let's see how high we can climb. Let's dive in and let the nonsense begin. Omen City. No removal. Ooh, I don't like that. On the draw, this is probably a mulligan. I mean, we can hope that the omen finds a removal. If we're not against aggro, it's a very good hand. This is always the kind of hand I talk myself into. It's so easy to do when you see so much value, but we could get run over, and the opponent has a very aggressive pet. I'm going to give it a shot. I, like I said, I talk myself into these things. But as soon as the opponent plays that turn 1-1 one, one drop, I get that sinking feeling that there's no way I can win. Maybe we can omen our way into removal spell, wrath of God, and not completely die. All right, one land gone. Glass casket, okay, do we save that for annex and play omen of the sea now? Do we play Birth? I don't know. Birth, in theory, can prevent plenty of damage. The Glass Casket can nail the Annex, and then we can play the Teferi. Maybe we only make plays here that affect the board. We do have to find another island for the Teferi. Let's put some faith in the deck for that. That's honestly a pretty tough play. Not omening when you have three of them, but that 0-4 wall could be a, the, the difference between life and death, as well as the two life on turn four from the birth of Melitus. Take three. Means they may not have the fourth land. Weird. Why not pump with the Rimrock Knight? They might be holding up Shock for a Skyclave Apparition. Okay, they're just going to play all their one drops, all of which die to shatter the sky. Which I think that's the plan now, right? Omen of the Sea, try to find Shatter the Sky. They get an Ember Cleave next turn over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. If they draw land, which they may not have another because they took three, seven, eight, nine, ten, not dead. Don't exile something good. Banishing Light. Interesting. They could spend their turn playing it. They did not, by the way, draw the land. Down to 10. That turn went a lot better than I could have hoped for. And the Banishing Light. See what they target. Target this for the two life? Leave me with a wall? I think the wall is worth more than two life. Especially since if I blink or remove this, I get back the birth. I don't like that play. I mean, I like it. You know what I mean. Let's get Teferi down. I think that's the play here. Get Teferi down. We still need to find Shatter for all this to actually work out. But we'll put the Banishing Light and the Glass Casket in our hand. This is good Ember Cleave protection. Is it the omen or the other birth? I think it's the omen. I just don't have time for these omens. 
Do they draw a land? And do they attack Teferi, the master of time, who recently got off a stint playing the ghost of Christmas past in CGB's A Christmas Carol? Move to attack. No land. Very lucky to not hit the land drops. Like, that is, that is looming large right now. Whoa. Whoa, don't not with the zero one. Anything but with the but the zero one. Alright, they're all going after Teferi. Steal another Really? Are all my win cons going away? Here's the block. What's the play? Yeah, Embercleave. No. No Embercleave. Okay. Oh, if you try to Bone Crusher Giant this, you're going on the Red Mage Misplay Hall of Fame. All right, we're casting Bone Crusher Giant. Nice. Shatter, shatter, where art thou? Come on now. Come out and play. So, ECD, and we have kind of a repeat of the last turn, unless the opponent draws a land. But last turn was okay. Or we could play two removal spells. Getting an ECD ticking is a big deal, though. It really is. I say we try to repeat last turn. This might be a little greedy, especially if they do draw the land. I have my hopes. I'm sticking with them. Another robber. Last turn they threw stuff at Teferi. They're doing it again. That is good. Please don't take all four Dream Trawlers. Okay. Um, how to do it. Block here, plus the Teferi. Remember, Teferi comes back from the dead when ECD expires. We've seen a lot of land since we got the Teferi down. And there, at long last, is Shatter the Sky. Boom. Cover your ears, little ones. So we still don't have anything in the graveyard for Teferi. But I think we can phase something and then bring it back. So we're going to put some stops down. Robber can go after Teferi. So I still think the right play that gets us another loot is this one. And they scoop. Red Mage, you stole... All my win cons. Did I really just go from 33 to 31? Man, they're not handing out rank for the Red Mage victories like they used to. Yeah, that was real, guys. You can win a game right now and move up two spots. If you lose a game, you can lose 30. Good deal. Good deal. We'll be number one in no time. All right. Okay. We're doing this again. Come on, untapped land. We really need an untapped land. At least this one has early removal. If you steal my untapped land... Okay. Wow. Scrybug. We were about to get scrybugged. Let's see. I guess we wouldn't mind the opponent having another birth, would we? So we'll crack this. Shuffle that back in. Do we get another white? I think we get another white, even though we have the ca the Castle Vantress here, because we need double white for Skyclave, Shatter, and ECD. Yeah, Rimrock Knight. Right? Right? Come on now. Come on now. It's, magic is easy. Just Rimrock whatever you want. Okay. Okay, dude. Okay. Now you're just a memer.
Will we draw land? Whatever will we do against the O4? <laughs> Play something else. Oh. Okay, no land. This is going to get Bone Crusher gianted, actually. So we're going to exile the Birth of Melitus. If the opponent lets this happen, then we get a 2 2 when it dies. Let's see. Oh, they let it happen. If they do it in response, I don't get the 2 2. Oh, oh, man, Red Mages. Red Mages. God bless them, everyone. Uh huh. Come at me, bruh. Okay. Well, I guess they have Bone Crusher Giants for days, so they're fine. They're just fine. There we go. We have double white. Uh, I guess we'll grab another blue. Alright, good question here. Skyclave? Shatter? I guess we use these shatters because the opponent might just only play a Bone Crusher Giant. If they play more than that, we shatter again. Flood, sucker. Flood. Big bones. Does the opponent have another Bone Crusher Giant? Let's hit next and see if it does anything. They do. That or they have another Rimrock Knight. They could also have a Shock. But either way, we don't want to play the Apparition in this scenario. We want to play the Omen, try to hit a land drop, and play the Casket. <laughs> They're roping me for checking their hand. Hey, it's Arena. It's a whole new world of esports. You got to be prepared for this stuff. More shatters? I mean, if they can't get a foothold with creatures, what can they do? They might even end up robbing that when all's said and done. They have a, another robber somewhere. So we take this one, they bone crush my face, they play another bone crusher giant, then we ECD it. They didn't bone crush face, so it's probably a robber of the rich. Fireblade Charger, that's it? Weird. All right, I'll send the apparition. Maybe it is a robber of the Ri maybe it is a rimrock knight, but they would have played it, I think. Or it's all an elaborate bluff, or just a shock. Just a shock. You never want to play your apparitions into those things. There just was in my opinion there was not a better play. Okay. The opponent might be just playing around sweepers in painstakingly slow fashion. Oh, there's the Rimrock Knight. At least it's not an Embercleave. Boom. Yep, they're, they're getting there a damage at a time. We're not getting ahead just yet. We don't even have the mana for a Dream Trawler if we draw it. Oh boy, there it is again. Is that number three? Bone Crusher Giant, man. It's so much damage in one card. It's just so much all the time. Okay, that's kind of like life gain. Here's Annie. We could play another ECD. We have another Skyclave coming back soon. We could play this Skyclave and get rid of this. and hold up the Neutralize. I know I always feel better holding up a Neutralize, but this last card probably is not great. Let's just drop another ECD upon them and save this combination of cards for the future when things are less certain. Not only that, just getting the 3-3 three, three for free is often enough against Mono Red. 
They sure, they certainly play their game in the margins, you know? Like, a single 3-3 body is more for them to worry, more for them to deal with than most decks. Most decks go over the top of a 3-3, but Mono Red... Mono Red, it, it matters, man. Okay, they play that right into the Apparition. We're trying to find a Dream Trawler. I guess I will accept to Fairy, will I? Okay. I'll accept both. Free Apparition. Exile Fireblade Charger. Teferi Master of Time. We don't need Shatter the Sky anymore. The opponent won't get wide on us anytime soon. They're passing the turn. Let's activate Teferi. Discard the planes. Let's use the scry on the omen. We don't have Yorian, so we never flicker the omens. So if we have a mana efficient opportunity to scry, that's usually a good time to do it. Draw birth. I want the birth. I want the wall. I want the two life. But I don't necessarily need the planes. So we'll play the birth. We'll dig with the fairy. Discard the planes. And we will not attack, right? I'm going to save this to discard to this Teferi as well. No reason to attack. We win the long game here. No reason to give the opponent a free hit with a Fervent Champion, a Robber of the Rich, anything of that nature. Again, more Teferi. All right, neutralize locking up the game. Let's play the Omen. We might also scry the Omen. Just looking for Dream Trawler right now to wrap this up. Anytime now, Dreamboat. Where are you at? Yeah, we we got some deja vu on last turn. We might actually attack with the 3 3 now that we have a wall. We are in the torture stage of the game. Where I'm right at home. <laughs> yes. Make every minute painful to watch. Yes. Good, good. Fervent champion. Definitely not worth a counter. Wah, Embercleave! Have you seen this card? Um, why? Why not counter the Embercleave? And another Teferi and another Skyclave. Come on, Dream Trawler, where are you at? Where are you? I will find you, Dream Trawler. One way or another, I will find you. I told you. I guess there's no reason to give up the Teferi for the ultimate when we might not have to. Let's see what they do with this card. They pump? Fervent Champion. Never Surrender. Never Surrender. Go ahead, Ember Cleave this. You can't. You don't have enough mana. like seconds. <laughs> Um, Banishing Light can go. Hexproof, that fails. I'll take the life. And, oh, now you're gonna leave. <laughs> oh, man. Red mages that never surrender. They're like uh, food for the soul. Hey, we're on the play this game. 
Let's see if we can pull an untapped land with our scry from the temple. That would be nice. If we have to play tap land into tap land into birth, which is like a tap land, because we have to pay mana to find it, that'll be a slow hand. <laughs> Yay, we did it, everybody. It's a Christmas miracle. How long will my Christmas decoration stay up? I know, I'm sure that's what's on all your minds. Um, until, until my wife takes them down, until Covert Gogina takes them down. Two planes. I think we take the time for an omen here, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, maybe just curving out is better. Although I don't want to shatter my walls if I end up having to shatter. Let's let's take time for an omen. Why would I have to shatter if they open on planes planes? I don't know. I don't know. Besides, shatter is usually bad against white decks because of selfless savior. They're doing nothing. I'm so confused. We definitely want neutralize. Their deck is shaping up to be controlly, so I think we keep both. I mean, ECD is usually pretty good against them, and they'll probably be using Shatter the Sky and Ondu Inversion to fight our Dream Trawler, and possibly Ugin. Four planes. Skyclave. Sure. They're going to target the Omen. We don't have Yorian. We don't have a use for our Omen, so we'll use the Scry. I really did want another land here. So if Birth is going to be my other land, we can pass with Neutralize open and play Omen, so I guess I'll keep the Omen. We shuffle away the Dream Trawler. I think that's fine. We have another one and two ECDs to keep it coming back for more. Whoa, this is one of the slower mono-white Speaker of the Heavens aggro life gains I've ever seen. Oh, now we're deploying all the stuff. All right, we let that go and we play ECD. I'm going to try to hold neutralize for things like Selfless Savior and Heliod that are very annoying. Uh, Alcide of Life Spawning, Luris. We'll see how it works out. Huh. I think I should keep the Teferi because it's good with the ECD. I don't think I need the Neutralize anymore because we're up against a creature deck, which is a bit of a surprise to me at this point. Get out. Get out, Ket. Out of here. Now we'll set up next turn. We'll play Teferi, discard the Dream Trawler, and get it back for free. Which might mean we end up ditching the Shatter the Sky strategy. Yeah, they're really afraid of Yorian, but I guess that's the benefit of changing your deck pretty often. We're not a Yorian deck, but they don't know that. Shattering this board is tempting. When you talk about a free Dream Trawler or shattering this board, I'm not sure what I like more. How about we just use the Dream Trawler to get back a Teferi, or the uh, ECD to get back a Teferi, and then shatter the next turn? That's not bad. hide that for now. We'll hide that we have this ability. Probably cycle this neutralize because I don't know if the counter spell is where we want to be against white aggro. Banishing light. Okay, target. To furry. We will plus. And we will discard. Am I going to shatter or am I going to troll? Hmm... I'm just going to get another Teferi and put off the Trawler. We're going to Shatter. Could have gone worse. Hmm. 
Up to 24, cycle. Here to parry. It takes impressive knowledge to be a temporal Think fast. Now I'm going to drop off the trawler. We'll get it back soon. Boom. So I could exile this and get another to ferry back. It's not the worst. More activations. I always discard the tap lands. You never know when you might need all your mana. Lurie. Lurie for speaker. Okay. Well, it's going to keep the game going for a minute. But these ECDs are going to be stressful. Glass casket, the Skyclave. Now if we draw another Skyclave, we can get it out of the glass casket. Opponent rebuilds their board very well. It must be said. Very well. Let's see what we find with the Omen. I'd take another Shatter. Trawler. Glass Casket's nice. I mean, there's nothing wrong with anything here. But let's play the ECD and get it ticking. Opponent is at 24. We could phase this out and attack to put make it hard for them to make angels. I'm not actually worried about it, though. Castle acquired. Three, three attacks me? You think that was intentional? I'm guessing that was not intentional. <laughs> Yeah! Up to number 21 from number 26. Today's grind has gone well, aside from ranking up by tiny inches. We're playing against aggro decks, which is exactly where the deck wants to be. In its current configuration, it's all about smashing those aggro decks. If our next opponent is casting Dance of the Mance or Genesis Ultimatum, things are going to be a lot harder. We also haven't encountered rogues. Let's see what happens. If we can find a land in our top three cards, this hand is very good. Looks like our opponent's playing Mono White, which is a matchup I'm not afraid of because I have a lot of exile effects to go with my Shatter the Skies. But getting mana screwed, I'm afraid of that. I am always afraid of that. All right, well, they're casting Giant Killer. Their hand isn't very explosive. We're going to get a planes with the birth. We'll grab an island now. We are having a hard time hitting land, though. Good news is there isn't too much pressure. Opponent cast the Luris. Dream Trawler off the top. Okay. What's going on with drawing six drops? Let's see if we can dig up a land with the Omen. We have to keep hitting land drops. There's really no choice here. And there is one. And another Skyclave. I'm just going to go for land, though. At this point, that's how we lose. No land. All right. So, Casket. We go for the Casket. They can sack Savior in response, so we can't target that as much as I'd like to. So we'll put the Loris in the Casket. The sequence that's probably going to happen is opponent will play a Skyclave, exile the Casket, get back the Loris, and then from there, we play a Skyclave. We can't exile the Savior, so we try to exile their Loris again. It's going to get ugly. I mean, if they don't have the Skyclave, that's great. But they probably do. So they have the combination of cards that's going to give us some fits. I say they do because it's a slow hand, but no, they play Broodmoth. Okay. Maybe our apparitions will be golden. There's a land. 
I think we're in cycle neutralize realm here. Giving the opponent a 4-4 doesn't sound great, but I think we risk it. They have to kill the apparition to do it, and they've got the casket. On the bright side, apparition for casket gets another apparition. Two saviors. Shatter's looking bad. Teferi. Mm, Teferi, like, phasing out a savior is interesting. I think I let this die, because we've got three trawlers, and this gives us two shots at drawing more land. And it distracts the opponent from our face for a minute. Tap your wall. Good choice. Speaker. They're still at 20. The speaker is a long way from being good. Attack everybody at Teferi. Happy to let her... Happy to let you die, to be honest, bro. I think we discard this and play the Trawler. The Giant Killer, though, is a big problem. It's a big problem. We need to Shatter first. Which they'll protect this and this. It's not good. We're at 16. Maybe we can just cast two Dream Trawlers. We get a second chance. I was going to play Birth of Melitus into Skyclave Apparition. Getting a Skyclave Apparition, targeting the Giant Killer, and then play the Trawler next turn. It might just be better to play Trawler into Trawler. Uses their mana. They're a long way from gaining the life. Should brick wall them eventually. Mm. And if they have another giant killer, then my play with the apparition is pretty bad anyway. This is tough. This is really tough. I'm going to go with the birth play because it's slower. Like, it's a slower burn, and we're the control deck. So that should be in our wheelhouse if our life total isn't under pressure, which I feel like we're doing okay on that. If they have another glass casket or another giant killer, it's a pretty rough play for sure. Here's Linden. I mean, they can attack with everything. And they can gain five. It's not enough yet. And we can force them to use the saviors. Like, that's what they're trying to do here. Let's force the saviors to go. Then the shatter gets really good. Fight is one. Okay, Shatter wasn't getting better anytime soon. They kill an Apparition. They get another 2-2. Two -two. They're at 25. Next turn they can make an Angel. Another Teferi. We can actually phase out the Speaker after they enter combat. But how do we get rid of the Savior? We can also just Shatter this, let them protect the Speaker. Attacking's here, interesting here too, because if they take it, they're further away. Further away from activating speaker. Like, if they just take it, maybe we do something different. Okay. 23, 24. So they can get up to 28 by attacking with all. But if we play the Dream Trawler... Then their attack looks pretty rough, right? The other play is we play Teferi, we phase out their speaker, but then we definitely don't want to shatter. So I think it's Trawler time. I think it's Trawler time. Hold this land in case we need to discard it. That way they'll have to run things into the Trawler, which gives us life. 
Wow. What a draw. What a draw. Oh, that's brutal. And they don't attack any more into the trawler. So they're not going to get there with the, ange with the angel. I mean, we can phase the linden. Gain two life here. Another Teferi. Okay, we can phase the Linden twice, right? No, we only have six. All right, they're going to get an Angel, and they're going to do a lot of things. I think we say go and then see what they do in the next attack step. I'd rather phase the Linden on their turn. Ooh, that's good. That's good. All right, I'm dropping off the Teferi. Forget phasing, screw it. Give me that. You're going to have to try that Sky Maul thing again. And then we'll phase whatever they Sky Maul. Hit ya. Down to 18 now. Not really afraid of the Angels. Yep, the Aspirant is here. They don't have enough mana to Sky Maul now. They're going to take another bump from the Trawler. What are you doing? What are you doing? That Aspirant isn't the way. Everybody attacks to fairy. I mean, we definitely want this gone. Like that's a big part of things. We can block this to fairy takes five. That will leave to fairy dead. So we'll phasing. If we block in such a way that we can shatter and the opponent scoops it up. I think what I want to do there is I want to block in such a way to keep the to fairy, force the selfless savior to be sacrificed and shatter. So. We block here, we block here. The Teferi takes four, we plus it, we go up to five. We untap, we plus Teferi again, we attack with Dream Trawler. So that's two extra cards drawn, six more life gained, and then we shatter, we draw another card from the Trawler, we sweep their board, and then we're left with Teferi, Trawler in hand, three extra cards, they might get a 1-1. One -one. Good deal. Levente, Yorian! Ah, uh, not what we came to beat. We'll just have to draw the right cards. This is a good start. All of these can hit all the things we need to hit. Finding our two neutralizes will probably be key to keep Yorian from amassing a lot of value. Let's see what kind of Yorian you are. Temple of Deceit. Blue Black Yorian. Esper. We will see. Ooh, Fable Passage on two. We like to see that. You like to see that. Birth of Melitas, Plains. Omen of the Sea, slightly better when you're not under pressure. I don't think I need either of these, though. As much as I want to hit land, I think I'll be able to do it. But what am I digging for? Elspeth Conquers Death, Dream Trawler, Teferi Neutralize. Those are the key cards. Should I keep another land just so I don't end up not hitting land? I don't think so. I think we'll get there. Told you we'd get there. We're also the Maniac who can sacrifice their Omen of the Sea right away, because we have no other use for it once it's on the board. Of course, it's good against Doom Foretold, so maybe we don't sacrifice it. Oh, hi. I'm going to hang on to the passage. Drawing land is good. 
Holding priority is also key at certain times in these matchups to make people think you have counter spells. Let's get this exiled. I don't expect a Banishing Light to stay on the board against a deck like this. So using the Banishing Light on a token, say from a Skyclave Apparition, is usually the best use for it so that you don't let the opponent just get back whatever you put under it. Or we could get a Treacherous Blessing off the field. That's not terrible. I think the opponent's going to Wrath soon, so getting rid of this doesn't make sense. Yeah, let's send this to the graveyard so they don't get to blink it with a Yorian. As bad as that feels. But it also gives us an empty Banishing Light. And an empty Banishing Light is good against Doom Foretold. Maze Mind? Obnoxiously good. I really want to play Maze Minds over Omens in this deck. I've thought about it a lot. Oh yeah, you try to draw your land right here, if you don't have one. They might have been checking me too for priority. Empty glass casket on this 04? I don't think so. The board is going to get wrathed anyway. Extinction evented because of Dream Trawler. All right, if I play the Trawler, I think my opponent will have to spend time answering it, which means I'll have time to Skyclave this later. But the other thing is, if I play another Skyclave, they may use an Extinction Event on the Apparitions and not have it for the Trawler. Ooh, I like it. I actually like it a lot. Because the, the key to this game is going to be, can we have uh, a Trawler just go off? uncontested. Can we start smashing with a trawler? If yes, we can win. If no, we probably lose. This might mean they don't have an extinction event. Another ECD is nice. So is another birth. This is basically a land into an ECD. And I think we want to play the ECD, so. Once we have the ECD down, we can Teferi discard the trawler and get it for free. Start here. This can be a blue. Because this gets a white. Further insulation from Doom Foretold, although we're doing really well on that front. The important part here is that they don't have second Elspeth Conqueror's death. And they already have one in the graveyard, which they discarded. Ugh. The Nightmare? Alright. So the opponent's feeling in charge of the board. Now, if we play a Dream Trawler, the um, Extinction Event's gonna hurt pretty bad. Not only that, if we play the Teferi, they don't even hit anything with this Nightmare. Why are they leaving? Man! People just scooping! 13, though. Uh, the highest rank I can remember being since I've been on the YouTube journey is 11. Shall we go for it? Alright. Let's see if we can get somebody in the numbers. I would not want to win and not move at all. And number 741 is up next. Oh, on the draw, this is a slow hand. Easy keep. All right, let's see if the white deck can put on the pressure. Look at that top deck. I'm more whitelisted than the white deck. Whoa, moving in. Moving in with Sentinel's eyes. Okay. Let's see if they have Karametra's Blessing. Is this Mono White Boggles? 
Meaning you put out a one threat, you put auras on it, and you protect it with cards like Karametra's Blessing that give Hexproof, or protection spells like Fight as One. This is where we usually get Skyclave Apparitioned. Linden. Alright. I'll be the one with the Apparition then. Let's, if we keep the pressure off, we should be able to win this game. ECDs to fairies should be better than their late games. And the exile effects get through a lot of things that they rely on. Like, they rely on Heliod being hard to interact with. Elspeth Conqueror's death doesn't really care. Unless they have Elseed of Life's Bounty. And they've got an Aspirant. Hold back, throw a block. We want this in the graveyard for the ECD. We don't need it in the graveyard for the ECD, though. We have another Teferi. It's a very tempting attack, but then they get a 3-3 token, so no. Ah, there's the Skyclave. What are you targeting? You. If we blink this out, they miss a turn with a token and a turn of attack. We're going to play the ECD and exile this. I guess if that's the play, we should just discard the other Teferi now. We'll get it back for free when the Elspeth Conqueror's death hits. Alright, this can pick off the Luminarch Aspirant, but we can wait another turn for that. Let's get the Elspeth Conqueror's Death ticking. I'll have that 4-4 now. Come on, guys. We're going for the highest MTG Arena rank I can ever recall having. I only say recall because the very, very early days of MTG Arena... I may have been higher, but I don't remember what it was. If so, it was like number eight. It wasn't like top five or anything. It definitely wasn't number one for anybody who's really curious. Let's play the Omen and see what we find. I mean, it's land. We can do better, right? We don't need those. Neutralize. Can't play it this turn. All right, you, what is this? As long as you have another cleric as the lifelink. I guess I'm not scared of those until the Maul of Skyclaves comes down. Let's hit the Luminarch. And hold back the team. We've got Teferi on the way. Luris can't cast the Sentinel's Eyes, though, because of the Elspeth Conqueror's death. Selfless Savior can't protect from another ECD. Loyalty. ECD. What a card. Have you had enough pain? Let's get the Luris out of here. No value engine. Attacking into these? No. Nah. Attacking is for uh, aggro mages. I know exactly who I am. The one and best of one is evil and full of control. Fast. Casket is nice. I'll drop off the apparition in case we need something to get back with this ECD. Let's have a look at the bottom. Some cards we don't want, so we'll keep holding priority with the passage to not give away if we have a counter. Oh, baby! So, do we cast the Dream Trawler or do we get one for free? Don't need this. I'm going to cast this Dream Trawler. I 
Who knows, we might draw another one before the ECD trigger goes off. I have two Dream Trawlers. Besides, in a state like this, this might be enough for the scoop. I have seen Expedition Healer. If you're scoffing at this card, I've seen it around. It's decent with the cl mostly Cleric's Mono White deck and Maul of the Skyclaves. Because getting a 2 power that goes up to a 4 power lifelinker can be a big difference. So I don't think it's a complete joke. But it's definitely not, in my opinion, the strongest card for the job. I wouldn't play it. But it's not like... Like some people, I think, start calling people noob or budget players as soon as they see this card. And I don't think it's that bad. Just... For the record, that's that's my feelings on the matter. All right, draw. You see the trigger about to go off. Let's run this, just in case we hit that other dream trawler. Okay, we did not, but it's always worth a shot. The Apparition is not a bad hit. So we could hit the Selfless Savior, but they just sacrifice it, get it back later with Luris. So we'll hit their 3-3 Lifelinker. Who's in? It's going to take a lot of their force to block these. But they do get to make a 1-1. We'll offer in this manner. See how they block, play the omen, pump the trawler again. This game's in the book. The question now is, guys, what rank do we get? What's it going to be? I'm not a fan of counting chickens before they hatch, but... These are some pretty cooked chickens. Take the damage, nice. There's the other trawler. We were close. We were so close. I'll take it. Why not? Why the heck not? A few extra turns off of Teferi Master of Time. Not that the trawlers need them. I'll just discard this Banishing Light or this Glass Casket, whichever we want. Hey, maybe they'll scoop if we if we rub it in a bit. <laughs> I know, savage. I know. But that's what we do here. Good game. Good game. All right, four in the air. Not quite lethal, but two extra turns. Definitely lethal. Behold the clock. Do you hear the clock ticking, everybody? Death comes for us all, Orokusaki. But you and you die, it would be much worse. For when you die, it will be. Without honor. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Into the top 10, officially on this channel. Oh yeah. And we are back for the post game wrap up. Guys, I looked it up. The highest I ever got before was number 11. Uh, the, the stuff from like very early on in the early days of the mythic ladder, like I hit pretty early that the highest I got was number 12. So I've never been number eight. 
So number nine, you've seen a new peak rank for CGB right here live on YouTube. Merry Christmas, myself and the audience, those of you who believed in me. And I just want to say thank you so much to everybody. It means a lot to me. Uh, also, this wasn't set up this way. I didn't know that things were going to go the way they did today, but I want to show you what I'm going to take as a bit of a trophy. This is something a fan sent me in the mail, and oh my gosh, I brought a tear to my eye when I received it. It's a cutting board, you know, for cutting up mono red, but um, I mean, it's gorgeous. It, it just made me so happy. And so a very, very heartfelt thanks. I don't know if the person wants public attention, but you know who you are and you can take credit in the comments, of course. Uh, it has an inscription. Um, you can do magic. You can have anything that you desire. Magic and you know you're the one who can put out the fire. By America. And the band. Um, so, on, on behalf of the Cool Kids Club Dojo, I accept this award with graciousness befitting of a cocky, smug, punchable control mage. As well as this number nine mythic rank achieved here on YouTube today to let you all know I'm freaking balling, you guys. The one and best of one, baby. And let nobody forget it. Dream Trawler, you have always, always carried me to new heights. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Will we climb higher? Have we peaked? Find out next time on the Chronicles of Covert Go Blue. Roll the outro.